So in this tutorial, we're going to go through an interactive rebase and a rebase. Hmm, sounds nebulous. So rebase is uh, super confusing to understand uh, unless you think of them as being a Swiss army knife utility um, within Git. Swiss army knife utility in that it is a uh, multi-purpose purpose because um, typically commands and functions are all single use single purpose but within git some things have multiple utilities uh, we, we talked about one in a previous episode around checkout in checkout allowing you to switch where the point is pointing to but in checkout we can also provide a minus b option which actually also does a branch so uh, rebase is a swiss army knife utility and it is multi-purposed so the hint is in the name as to what it does so we've had these stacks of commits in this order. And in a true tree structure, everything has a parent. I mean, in this scenario here, you don't see what the true parent is. There's a, oh no, a hidden little chappy here who's the parent of all these guys. Um, I believe he's called root uh, the syntax as to how to get to him I can't remember off the top of my head but rebasing means root is the base for this guy I, this guy is built on top of him and he is the base for this guy and he is built on top of him so rebasing is really chopping off a node and repositioning him somewhere else on the tree so if we had a a tree it's hard to draw it in here let's see if we can a we had b and c and we had um d we could lop off this node here Let's just copy and paste that. We could lop off this D node here and attach him. Oh, let's keep it simple to C. So the tree has shifted, but rebasing is changing the base or re moving the base so d's base was b before and now in this scenario here d's base is c so you're taking him off and repositioning him so it's easy to visualize in a true tree structure this is a very flat tree structure we haven't branched off anywhere yet so that's its true name and um see so rebase really has two forms that i use one is to uh manipulate position of item in tree and two is for cleaning up commits uh, specifically for me squashing because how I operate is I try and make as many commits as possible lots of commits it's good. I mean, in my mind, it's logical progress. As soon as you've made a step or a logical thing, I commit it. And I worry about how that looks to the outside world later. You know, we get a piece of JavaScript working. Uh, we get uh, some CSS changed. We've got a piece of functionality changed. These are all commits going in. And let's say these are all part of a uh, new feature 
from the outside world, it would look better if this was committed as just one commit and his message was new feature added. Uh, and rather than in this world, this world here where we have fixed JavaScript, fixed CSS, you know, blah, it's easier to see a an atomic package, or you, it's easier to read a, just an individual aggregated commit message. So the second way I use rebase is for cleaning up commits, specifically squashing these multiple commits into a single commit for prettiness. So let's go and run through some examples of the interactive rebase. This is drinking my pop. Uh, this is uh, sort of going to assume some, in my example, some knowledge of um, Vim or VI editing tool. Um, and you can swap out your editing tool for anything you want. I just roll with the default, which may be VI. Um, so in this interactive rebase approach, let's just swap these around because I want to talk about this guy first. Two, one. In this interactive rebase approach, we're going to make a few commits and then we're going to squash them and reword them. So this is my developer one. I think he's up most up to date. Yeah, so he's in sync with he's in sync with Origin Master. So we'll just treat him as the source. We we we're free to go ahead and make changes. So on A text, we're going to add some new features. We're going to add feature B. Let's save that. Git commit added feature B. Let's go log, let's add a feature B, let's go add feature C. And I'm quick behind the scenes, I'm control Sing by the way, I'm saving. Added feature C. Git log. So we've got a few, let's just add feature D. Okay, should be good there. What branch am I on? Master, oops. I said I'd always be working off in um, a new feature branch, and I should be. I should have branched before I started making my edits. So let's uh, try and remedy that by creating a last minute branch right now. I mean, you've all done this, it happens all the time. You forget to branch, oops. So let's use our knowledge to try and branch late in the day and uh, fix it up and bring master back to where it was. Um, so let's branch. Three features, this is gonna be my branch name. And then, so our master is in sync with three, three features. We want to pull master back to where it was before, i.e. in line with origin. Um, get check out. Mm. Um, so which branch are we in? Git branch. So let's, we've got a branch now, so let's jump back onto master. So git reset minus minus help has brought up my inline documentation from the git manual. 
Um, Yeah, so I'm gonna do git reset. There we go. So I said git reset back to origin master. So origin master is just really a tag, but he's pointing to this node, which is where master is pointing to. So I have just reset master back to where he should have been. And you can see that there's a delta, that changes that I've made, just sitting around saying, it's saying, well, what should I do with these changes that have just been rolled back on? And I want to discard these changes on master. So let's do git checkout a.txt. Now these, this dash, this hyphen hyphen, whoops, hyphen hyphen effectively means anything after me treat as a file name because when you're typing stuff in command line and git git doesn't really know where a file starts and a command ends you know so this is a nice delineator between yeah this is my file so my branch is up to date with origin master there's nothing to commit my master is reset back to this node which is where i wanted him to be and uh, so let's jump back into our, th if, if we check our file system actually, we should see that bcd commits a rollback. This is him. If we check out our three features, they're back and three features, great. So back on to our um, original aim, which was an, in an interactive rebase. I mean, it was, it was handy that we had accidentally added stuff without being on a branch because that's a very typical scenario it happens to me a lot i don't want to work your master i forget and i'm making much of commits but the nice thing about git is you can always undo stuff even crazy catastrophic stuff you can undo so happy days so let's all segue or segue whatever it's called uh what just helped us cover another scenario and then another real realistic scenario which is helpful so we're going to rebase now so we have these three features that we want to squash into one new feature yes let's borrow the messages so we've got this is its current state And we're going to do an interactive rebase. And we're going to go to, uh, we want to rebase everything off this node here. So we can <clears throat> either give the SHA number ID, or we can give a, a synon or a name, like master or new feature. I'm just going to grab the out of habit, the SHA number. So I'm going to say git rebase minus i, minus i is the indicator for interactive, everything from here to head, which is here. Right, sorry. Before we do that, why is my head in there? Git state, git tree. Okay, my head's in the correct place. Git rebase minus i. This chap. So the context is we want an interactive rebase from this position to this position, inclusive of this position. Let's see what that looks like. So if we look back at our, let's put these side by side. Move this guy out of the way. So if we look at the order they were committed in, it was this one, then this one, then this one. But in this window, they're the opposite. So that's interesting. And then if we're looking at this 
piece of information here, we can do a few commands. We can pick to include the commit. We can reword it. We can edit it, squash, fix up. And they've got their explanations as to what they're doing. But we want to squash them and reword them. Right, so I click I or type in I for insert and I'm just going to change this from pick to reword. And I'm going to S for squash and S for squash. You can type in squash, but. So we've got three changes, reword, squash, squash. And the reword we'll use to reword our message. And it, was, it will squash all these two into this reword here. So I click type escape. Well, yes, you know, your escape key. Semicolon right quit. And then so the second prompt that pops up is to what's your new message you want to enter? As I'm in VI, I think. Typing D on my keyboard twice is going to delete this line. I for insert. Squashed. Commit. Semicolon right quit. And this is saying this is my final entry. I'm going to delete these other lines because I don't care about these. Anything with a hash in front of it will not show. I'll only see this message squash commit escape right WQ. Okay, let's look at our tree. There we go. So our, our original Our original scenario, we had six E E B B C C is still here, but on top of it, built on top of it, is just now one new SHA, which isn't either of any of these SHAs. It's its own unique SHA with all these features squished. So if we look at the output of the squish, great, all our stuff is still intact. We've got B C D commit still there, but we only have one one logical commit in play. So if we jump back onto master, merge that in, it will do a fast forward. Uh, three features, fast forward, git push origin master. Great. And this chap who is behind, if we do an update, or we, we can do a fetch, or we can just do a straight up pull which will do both, and uh, A, B, C, D is there. That's handy. So there's another scenario which can be a pain. Um, We've done the squash, but there's also the rebase and repruning things. So let's build a, let's use these two different developers to give an example of that scenario. So get branch. So I'm going to do another commit, just straight, I'm going to go, go against my advice, just for an example. I'm just going to do a commit straight against master. That's um, a. Add a D, E, sorry, uh, save. What was, what was my message format? Feature E, added feature E. Well, before I push that, let's do this. So developer one has added a feature E. Developer two does a fetch. He's up to date. So he starts working on something as well. He's gonna add feature F. Oops, save. Added 
future f. Oh no, both people have been adding work at the same time to the same parent item in the tree, so what's going to happen? So before he commits, developer A pushes up to the remote system. Okay, so he's now push. So feature E is in there, right? Then if we do um, git push, sad trombone. So fail to push, updates were rejected because the remote has stuff that you don't have locally. Let's have a look at the tree and see how that looks. So we can't push. We couldn't update the refs. We can do a fetch. So the fetch is obviously the baby step version of the pull. It just says, <clears throat> hey, get what's changed, but don't do any merging or pointer changing. And if I say tree now, so you can see that in this world, we've got 5B, then 2C, uh, sorry, 5B, then C62. And here we've got 5B, and there's the C62, but you can see it's forked off in two different directions. So we've had some sort of divergence happen. So we need to remedy that. So we know that the world is happy when things are built one on top of each other. And we didn't intend to introduce a branch here, it just happened, right? So what we need to do here is we need to pluck off from this branch and jam our feature F on top of this branch, right? Back on our picture we had this plucking. This wants to be plucked off and moved. So let's rebase uh, onto this chap. Okay, so let's look at the message we got back here. It says auto merging. It didn't do a fast forward, it had to do some thinking. It had a conflict, which is understandable because our a.txt was being touched by both parties. So we've got some, some messages saying you can do stuff. Let's see what the merge state looks like right now. So we've got this new look here, right? Um, So we've got the, where we're at, our current version, added feature F, which we can see here. This is our area, our area. Um, so this fence delineates between their changes and our changes. So everything this side of the fence is for added feature F, which is the stuff that we're working on. Everything on this side of the fence is what they were working on. Or head, you can see that's what they were working on. This head pointer we can identify there. And we know that we want both of these things, so we can manually resolve this ourselves. So we're going to inline edit. and get into a, a state that looks correct for where a.txt should be. So we're just going to whack all of this stuff. Save. And then going back to our original message, we saw that it said, uh, when you've resolved this problem, run git rebase minus minus continue. So let's uh, run that. Git status. Um, we're currently basing.
Okay, I need to add it. Sorry, I was missing that. It says, I, miss, I was reading the first part. Um, edit or merge conflicts and then must mark them as resolved using git add. Git add a.txt. And let's rebase continue. Git status. Let's jump back in. There's our ENF side by side. Git tree. So you can see now we're on top of the origin. We've we've got a now logical step of E then F. So that looks great. Git um, origin master. That's it. Excuse the beeping in the background. Um, but so yeah, we've 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 we resolve that conflict. We've done two different types of rebasing. We've started off with the interactive rebase, and then we've just manipulated, popping off and pushing back on this tree structure, which helped us resolve that branching effect. We didn't want it to branch. We wanted it to be sequential. So I hope that helps you.